Welcome to this, the final Sunday supplement of 2020, where we will be looking back over the last 40 weeks of this programme. I trust you've had a special Christmas, despite the strange circumstances that we find ourselves in. If you happen to be new or visiting us for the very first time, can I just extend a special warm welcome to you? The Sunday Supplement was first aired on the 29th of March. It was never designed to be a Sunday service replacement, but always wanted to draw the four church families together at 10.30 every Sunday through teaching, testimony, worship and prayer. Right from the start, the Sunday Supplement has, wherever possible, tried to involve as many different members of the four church families as it can. Some of you may remember me saying, can I just say a big thank you to all of you who've been uh, sending in contributions to the Sunday Supplement? Can I just encourage you to continue to do that, such that the Sunday Supplement is more about you and less about me? We have been privileged to have 14 different members of the various church families leading our time of teaching each week. And it was also a delight to have two former church members, Tina Trevitt and Sally Taylor, sharing their thoughts with us. Today we're going to examine the question, why should we pray? Have you ever wondered what God really wants from us? I believe that all he wants for us is to be close, for us to be fully his and to be found in him. Singing together in worship to God has unfortunately been one of the main casualties of the coronavirus pandemic. But our gifted team of singers and musicians have ably encouraged us to sing out on our own each week as we've been watching the Sunday Supplement. How great is our God Sing with me How great is our God And oh, I see how great How great
Prayer has been an important part of the Sunday Supplement. Each week our time of prayer has been led by well over 40 different members of the four church families. We've prayed for our area. Father, I thank you that your power and your love and your grace are freely available for all. Father, we just thank you for the villages of Shoscombe and Wellow and Peasdown. And Lord, we uh, proclaim a blessing over each village today in Jesus' name. For our schools. We pray for those who've gone back to school, nursery or childminders this week. Please would you protect them from the COVID-19 virus. We pray that you would give them peace as they leave their homes after two and a half months in lockdown and go back to schools that look very different to how they left them. Please give them strength and compassion to support each other, to enjoy learning and to flourish back in the school environment. For our mission partners. Father God, we thank you for the vision for the Redeemer Primary School. We thank you all children are made welcome here and that they are loved and given a very good education. May this school be a shining light, a beacon for Baghdad. Protect all those who work there as teachers, helpers and cooks and all the children and their families. And even some of our youngest members have led our time of prayer. Thank you, God, for being a lot and being a father. Thank you, God, for our family, animals, and please make the coronavirus go away. Amen. In the early days of lockdown, the Sunday supplement encouraged us to be doing three things. Firstly, to be praying for others. This week, I'd like to encourage us, please, to be praying for our streets. Let's be praying for each individual in our street or our road. Let's be praying that God will bless them. Let's be praying that God will have his healing hand upon them. Secondly, to be communicating to those around us. Can I continue to encourage you to communicate with at least one member of the church family each and every day? Just pick up the telephone and talk to somebody maybe that you haven't spoken to for some time or maybe send them a text or an email. Let's keep communicating with each other during this lockdown. And thirdly, to be helping others in practical ways. As the weeks went by, we heard about the Rainbow Factory in Underleaf Way. I just wanted to share a quick um, testimony about something that happened for us um, recently. Um, when the schools closed down a few weeks ago, um, Along with many other children in the country, our children painted rainbows to put in our window um, to spread the message of hope um, in our nation, which is facing such a tough time. And um, we quickly realised that there were no other rainbows in our little part of our street because um, we just have very elderly neighbours who retired. Some of them are very frail and most of them are self-isolating. Um, 
And so we decided we were on a roll with rainbow making and so we just made a whole bunch of extras um, to give to them. And um, I used the opportunity to get my eldest to practice his handwriting and he very wobblyly wrote um, hope always across the top of the, the posters. And um, we delivered them all and they were greatly, gratefully received and we have um, managed to have lots of phone conversations with all of them because we put telephone numbers inside the envelopes and um, managed to do a bit of shopping for some and it's just really opened up um, some lovely communication with, with them in a tough time for most of them and they're feeling really lonely. The Easter card production line in Saxon Way so we wanted to try and do something to bless our neighbours. So um, I asked the children to help make some Easter cards. And inside the Easter card, we just put a really simple blessing from number six, which talks about um, God blessing you and um, keeping you safe and um, his face shining upon you and giving you peace. And we just had that short message as well as an offer, um, if we can pray for anything. And we just posted it around um, our street and uh, so far a few people have got back to us and said that uh, they appreciated that. Um, we've had a couple of prayer requests and uh, some chocolate which is always nice but uh, just really want to encourage you if you feel like um, wanting to do something even the smallest things can really brighten up someone's day. And of a novel way of keeping clean scrubs being supplied to the NHS. Uh, this is a very quick story about how Charlotte and I are being blessed by our fantastic uh, Peasdown community. Um, I have to wear scrubs every day to work um, and they have to be washed separately at 60 degrees. Uh, but the lovely Sarah Carney has made me these scrub bags so I can put the dirty scrubs in at the end of the day um, and they don't have to contaminate anything else. And then the wonderful Heather Morgan is washing them in her washing machine and then ironing them and giving them back to me so that I can hang them up in my locker ready for the next day, um, which is fantastic. Testimony has been the lifeblood of the Sunday supplement. And week by week, it's been wonderful to hear from different members of the four church families. We've heard concerning things We've been asked to share a few thoughts about when the coronavirus came to visit the Downing household. Um, it was George who was first unwell. He, um, the last week of term before the schools closed early, he had a couple of friends that were exhibiting um, symptoms of a high temperature and, and a bad cough. And um, so we kept a close eye on him. It was a couple of days later that he woke up feeling unwell with a cold. And I really did think it was just a cold. He did say he felt very weird and strange and then lost his sense of smell and taste. And uh, that, that was then that I realised that he probably did have the coronavirus. And that just, I followed soon after abruptly with a uh, lot of symptoms, including a high temperature, um, nausea, vomiting, a thumping headache, aches and pains and extreme exhaustion. I was quite unwell. We've heard about happy things. We've been married over oh, two months, I think it is now. Yeah, it's gone really length. fast. Uh, we had a really fun day. So that was on Zoom, and Richard and Janice led us, and my sisters and Jamie's best male witnesses. Oh, yeah. We had a really fun time. So we were sitting on the bench that um, Jamie grew oh, up yeah. in his house with a pew, and the table in front of us was made by Jamie's dad. We used a service book that my dad gave my late mum yeah. for an anniversary present. Um, so it's really special, it's really lovely. And lots of good wishes and messages from everybody and that was amazing. So I've had lots of support and, and lots from... Champagne from the <laughs> neighbours as well, which was yeah. lovely. Yeah, so. from my St John's and James St John's both were really huge support, so thank you mm. all. We've heard about surprising things. Hi everyone, this is Howell and Glenn talking to you from our back garden in Ridlington. Yeah, we've got a story of God's provision for us at this time. Recently we were given a surprise gift of some money to buy a trampoline which is really lovely at this time of lockdown. The kids were able to get outside, enjoy the sunshine, have some exercise and uh, just get, have some fun. So we're really grateful for that. We've heard about how people's jobs have changed as a result of the pandemic. I'm here at work this morning um, at St Michael's Dental Surgery down in Twerton. Um, but there's not much to do. There's no patients to see. Um, no one's allowed in to the practice. Um, we're just answering phones at the moment, trying to help people out, trying to um, offer advice. Um, and yeah, things are 
pretty pretty crazy at the moment. Um, not pleasant for those who've got dental pain. Um, so you know we're trying to work through that um, as um, you know, as dentists. We're trying to um, set up services for people to access dental care and dental help um, in the city. Um, but it's quite slow progress at the moment. Um, but otherwise, yeah, the family's doing well. Homeschooling is um, is a joy. Um, and um, yeah, I just hope that everyone's um, keeping well, keeping safe. We've heard about what coming back to church has been like. What a joy it is to be able to get back to church on Sunday, the 26th of July. The church was out of bounds for 17 weeks, the longest I've ever been unable to attend. I've lived in Peasdown, opposite the church, for 36 years, and the longest I have pre previously missed services was no more than six weeks. So 17 weeks seemed very strange. Church for me, now living on my own, is a place to worship God, but also to meet my friends, who also come to praise God for all he does for us. We've heard about people's testimony of lockdown. Hello everybody, I just thought I'd give you a quick, quick update on how the Messer household are at the moment during this lockdown period. So Paul has been furloughed from work at the moment. Um, I am working full time from home, um, doing online learning for the nursery children. So um, been uploading lots of different activities, songs and rhymes, etc. for them, which has been quite a challenge. Learning a bit of patience, the old fruit of the spirit um, with the technology side of things. But apart from that, it's been very um, rewarding and I've really enjoyed um, having Google Meets, which is another word for Skype, speaking to the parents and children on a regular basis. Hello, I'm Sarah. I'm, I live in Wellow and I normally attend St. Julian's Church. And my experience of lockdown um, has been quite varied because I'm still working. I work as an obstetrician and gynaecologist part time. So I've been at work three days a week and then at home with my family. And at work, I've just been bowled over by how amazing um, everyone have been at pulling together to make the team work under enormous stress. We've heard from some former church members. Hello, lovely Peace Down family. Um, just to send our greetings from Bridgewater. Um, this is a kind of a, a hello from the Taylor family to say, firstly, a huge thank you for praying for us over the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. I know that many of you um, have trapped with us through the ups and downs of the last um, few months, um, but we just wanted to fill you in with what's been happening. We left Peace Down three years ago to move to Northampton. Um, that's when Danny's family are all from. And during our time there, I um, I had a baby. Her name's Iris. She is one years old. And also she's currently sleeping. And so the younger member of our families aren't on the video, but we'll hopefully send some photos so you get to see them. Um, so yeah, and also during my time up there, I was still continuing to explore donation. Um, I went through BAP while I was 30 weeks pregnant and I got accepted. I deferred a year and because of all the changes, we felt the best place to go was to go to Bristol Trinity to start my training there. So we've arrived in Bristol in August, kind of settled in, and I'm gonna start my course in September for two years and then just see what happens next, see where God calls us next. And finally, we've heard from our young people. the last 40 weeks we've had to learn some new words like zoom social distancing and lockdown it has therefore been interesting to he to see how some activities of the past have had to adapt to our new pandemic circumstances take babysitting for example how does that work in lockdown well we got a call from our son and his wife uh, and they said could you come and babysit we're having a date night this is what happened. Hi, Mum and Dad. Thanks for babysitting. Bye! Hi. What? What? Hi, Finn. Hi, Finn. Oh. Nice to see you. Finn, would you like a story about some pigs? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And some hens? Let's try it. 
the music. Here we go, Finch. And here's Shaky. Say hello to Shaky. Oh, Shaky's shaking. Oh. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. If you see you from the mark, don't forget to scream. How about this, Finn? How do you like this? Finn! Finn! And, and Finn, look at what big eyes Grandad's got. Woo! Look at this. Oh, and mine's coming up again. How does running a life group social evening run in lockdown? Dancing with wolves. How many words are there? One word. Oh, um, oh, um, are you sure it's not Saturday Night Fever? Greece. Greece. How does running a woman's coffee morning work when only six people can gather together outside, socially distanced. This is another arrival for the ladies' coffee morning, but as there were more than six, one leaves, one comes. Well, we're having a wonderful time. When one person arrives and there's more than six, one has to leave. It's absolutely fabulous to be in Heather's garden and see real people. <laughs> I did show that, and it's dry weather and warm, and the biscuits are lovely, and thank you. It's just lovely to be here with people. We can share our experiences of COVID. Um, it's just lovely to get back to doing something quite normal. It's lovely to see everyone. This is a new dimension to the coffee mornings, outdoor coffee mornings. I'm all for them. Thanks to Heather. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just lovely to have everybody. What is homeschooling like in lockdown? Good morning. Hello, Abigail. So today, Abigail, what are we going to be making? A boat. A boat. And what, what do we need to make our boat? Can you show us? Some scissors. Yeah. A paper straw. Some Play-Doh. Yeah. Some tape for the bunting if you want. Yeah. Some straw. Uh -huh. And what's that big plastic that you've got? This one. Uh, no. That one. This is what we use to put everything in. Really? For example, this. What is it like to have to work from home. Hi everybody, good morning. Welcome to my lockdown office. I usually go to Slough Borough Council from a Monday to a Thursday and work in the town hall there uh, and also go out to visit schools. But obviously all of that's uh, finished during this pandemic. Uh, schools are open and have been open all the way through the time. Uh, but I'm working from home and obviously only the essential people go in. I take phone calls, I do emails and I do lots of Zoom meetings. So today I've got Jerry's big screen up as well so that I'm able to see all the people that will be attending from the different schools. At regular intervals over the last 40 weeks, the Sunday Supplement has kept us up to date with our various mission partners. Sat7 is a Christian media network that uses uncensored satellite television to broadcast across the Middle East and North Africa and is also available globally online. Our purpose is to share the Christian message and to support and empower the local church in its life, work and witness for Christ. We broadcast around the clock over multiple channels in Arabic, Turkish and Farsi. Our programs include Christian dramas, movies and talk shows, inspirational teaching, documentaries and church services to encourage believers. 
Our kids' channel is widely recognized by Arab parents from all backgrounds as a safe place for their children. Sending a quick message to our friends, our partners, our loved ones in the UK and other parts of the world uh, to let you know that we are well, the Wakely family are all in good shape, our Tutela project is doing, is doing good, and uh, we're surviving in these very strange times that uh, have come upon us all. Uh, here in Mozambique we are in a sort of a state of emergency. Oh, hello my friends in Peace and St. John. What a joy to greet you at the end of lockdown of, from COVID-19. I'm Jan Ransom from Flame International. It's a couple of years since I've been with you, but I'm delighted to speak to you. Hey everyone, my name's Joel. I'm the senior leader of Patton Church here in Swindon. We're a new church. We've been going for about a year and a half now. Our vision is inviting people into family to serve Swindon. So in Swindon's a big old town, there's 200,000 people there who don't know Jesus, who aren't part of the church. And our heart is to be a, be a church family who invite those people in. That's our real passion. We're dreaming of a thousand baptisms. We're dreaming of an army of young people running after Jesus. We're dreaming of being a church who plants churches who plant churches. We're looking to um, reach out to some of the social issues in our town. We're dreaming of playing our part in seeing Swindon come alive. And you guys have been so kind and supported us in that. We really appreciate your partnership in what we're doing. Um, so I, I was part of your church um, a number of years ago now and we've recently had Tom Morgan he's joined our team he's our curate now which is fantastic helping us so um so yeah there's a real connection between us and you guys we love you and we really appreciate you as a result of the pandemic various ministries of the church well they've had to adapt to the way they operate and the Sunday supplement has tried to keep the four church families informed about these changes Early on, Sarah Carney informed us how Little Ones and the After School Club were operating. For those of you who know nothing about SJ's Little Ones, it's um, a midweek group that meets four mornings a week um, in the church. Um, and our aim is to love our community, Peace Down St John and the wider area. And um, just through offering a really safe, stimulating and um, welcoming environment. Um, and just walking alongside people each day. Lockdown put a complete stop to our groups. So we turn to our Facebook page and our Facebook page um, is quite well established already. Um, so onto there each week we chose to put um, hello song um, and a story and then a craft relating to the story and then also an encouragement, especially for the parents. And then our after school club, we also then sent each child um, an Easter egg and a special little Easter activity pack that we'd um, already prepared. Um, so that was just a case of dropping them all round. Um, and then again, we've turned to our Facebook page um, and onto there each week we're putting um, different crafts um, for them to do um, and we've had a few people um, send things back to us which is really lovely. Rob has also shared with us how Soul Kids has moved online. Hi everybody, Rob here from Soul Kids. I just wanted to update you on what we've been doing each week in Soul Kids with the children. Here is a short overview from Kathy and myself. You know, trouble is something we can't avoid in life. But what is most important is not what happens to us, but how we respond to it. Will we let fear and worry overwhelm us? Will we freak out? Or will we remember that God is faithful and he always takes care of us, even when I'm in trouble. Now our game this week is called Superhero Race. Someone is in trouble and will the red or the blue super superhero save them? Here 
is Kathy with some more interesting thoughts. And today we're learning that when we need help, we can call on God. Did you hear that? I said we can call on God. Wait, if you're going to call God, you need his phone number. Have you got God's phone number? Oh, silly me. I forgot we don't need a phone or a phone number to call God. We can talk to him anytime we want to by praying. Praying is talking to God. You can tell God anything at any time because he's always listening. And also how running a holiday club has had to work during the pandemic. Hi everybody, this is Rob. Welcome to Holiday Club TV. Um, a number of churches around Bath and the surrounding areas have got together to produce an online holiday club called Unlikely Heroes. I thought it'd be good to show you what we've been getting up to as we've been releasing our weekly video every week throughout the six week summer holidays. So let's take a look at what me plus a lot of other children's workers, including Sarah Carney from St. John's and myself, have been getting up to. Hello! Hello. That's just not true. Jesus loves you. La 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 la. Getting reports of another battle being fought between the Israelites and the Philistines. Wow. Over to our reporter on the scene. And finally, we have heard what running an alpha course on Zoom has been like. How long was your alpha evenings? They started at eight o'clock and we finished, I think, just about every week by quarter past nine. So it's not a heavy time commitment at all. And the alpha material, was that good? Yep, we used all of the um, alpha videos. They're very professionally done. They're an easy watch, um, amusing and serious at the same time. As we come to the end of this Sunday Supplement review, I'm struck by what a creative bunch of people I have the privilege to journey with. Who would have believed that such a small group of people could come together to produce the 40 programmes of the Sunday Supplement? I'm so proud of what you have all achieved and feel honoured to be part of it. Can I also take this opportunity to highlight Jerry's vital part in producing the Sunday supplement week by week and to thank him for all his work. Thank you for joining us for our special 40th programme. It's always great to have you with us. May I wish you a very happy new year. If you've enjoyed watching the Sunday supplement, why don't you subscribe to the St Jay's Group channel? And if you've a comment to make, well, please do so in the box below. And finally, I look forward to seeing you all again online next week in 2021.